analysis of tidal energy. Tidal energy projects involving tidal dams are more expensive per kilowatt of installed power than similar sized systems that use river dams. Twice a day, tidal flows go through a flood stage, slow down, stop, reverse into a ebb tide, and repeat the cycle all over again. The constant start and stop cycle creates intermittency problems similar to wind turbines and wave generators. Through a tidal dam might be identical to a river dam in every way including cost, the tidal dam will produce less than half the amount of electricity. A typical average plant load factor for tidal energy generators is about 27%. Load factor defines the amount of actual power output that uh, a tidal energy generator can give. Installed generating uh, capacity of a tidal generator is 100 megawatts with a load factor of 27% which would produce only 27 megawatts per hour on average over a given time, usually a year. That makes tidal energy really expensive. The U.S. Department of Energy Tidal Energy Report concludes that tidal power costs are not competitive with fossil fuel plants, but a private company known as Blue Energy of Canada believes that they can generate tidal electricity at rates that are highly competitive with existing conventional power generators at rates of less than 5 cents per kilowatt per hour. Moving forward, the cost associated for developing tidal power stations across the world can vary from project to project. If capacity of generating electricity was measured in megawatts, it would obviously cost them more than if it was limited to kilowatts. We generally do not see tidal power plants having the capacity in kilowatts. It is more sustainable and economical when developed for large-scale electricity generation. For instance, the project Severn Estuary in UK costs $15 billion, which produces 8,000 megawatts. Environmental aspects. Perhaps the largest disadvantages of tidal barges are the environmental and ecological effects on the local area. This is very difficult to predict. Each site is different and there are not many projects that are available for comparison. The change in water level and possible flooding would affect the vegetation around the coast, having an impact on the aquatic and shoreline ecosystems. The quality of water in the basin or estuary would be affected, the sediment levels would change, affecting the turbidity of the water and therefore affecting the animals that live in it and depend upon it such fish and birds. Fish would undoubtedly be affected unless provision was made for them to pass through the barrage without kill being killed by turbines. All these changes would affect the types of birds that are in that area as well as the fish and they will migrate to other areas with more favorable conditions for them. These effects are not all bad and may allow different species of plant and creature to flourish in an area where they are not normally found. Social implications. The building of a tidal bridge can have many social consequences on the surrounding area. During the construction of these bridges, the amount of traffic and people in the area will increase dramatically and will last for a number of years. The La Ronde tidal bridge in France took over five years to build. This will also bring revenue to the area from tourism and hospitality industries that will accommodate all the different types of visitors that the bridge will bring. This will give a boost to the local economy. The bridge can be used as a road or a rail link, providing a time-saving method of crossing the bay or the estuary. There is also the possibility of incorporating wind turbines into the bridge to generate extra power. The bridge would affect shipping and navigation and provision would have to be made to allow ships to pass through. Political implications. Canada is a resource-rich nation where energy invariably ends up becoming a political issue. A waterway with the power potential of some 40,000 megawatts of renewable energy at stake is a political issue. The main channels where tidal power could be generated in Hudson Strait are in Nunavut territory. The ocean water that flows in the channels is under Canadian federal jurisdiction. Jurisdictional issues will first need to be resolved before any turbines can be installed anywhere in the Hudson Strait. The second issue pertains to gaining access to the immense uh, energy storage capacity that exists in the hydroelectric dams of Quebec. Ocean water could still be pumped uphill from Hudson Bay into hydraulic storage in some of the hydroelectric dams in western Quebec during periods of severe summer drought. A tidal megapower would indirectly provide Quebec with a secure source of revenue and fulfill a political objective of promoting Can Canadian national unity. A northern tidal mega power project in which the federal government would participate would achieve such an end. 
The Mega Power Project would serve numerous environmental objectives by offering the American Northeast access to electrical power from a competitively priced clean and renewable source of energy. It would also provide ample power to sustain a fleet of electrically powered municipal transit vehicles and a large fleet of electricity rechargeable automobiles in eastern Canada, the American Northeastern in the future. Future Advancements in Tidal Power Energy There are many ongoing tidal power projects worldwide, out of which the largest tidal energy station is in Europe. It is a Rance estuary in North France and was developed in 1966. This tidal station is only one in the entire of Europe. Proposed Tidal Energy Projects Worldwide Proposed Tidal Energy Projects Worldwide There is a proposed project with the name of Severn Barrage in Wales. This project has been proposed in past but it never got initiated. This project estimated cost is about 15 million euro. It is also stated that it will produce energy which is massive, 8000 megawatts, which is more than 12 nuclear worth of power station. Some proposals have mentioned that it will provide 2500 megawatts worth of power. There is a huge difference between power generation estimation and it is not appropriate to risk 15 million euros worth of money. This is the main reason why this project is yet stuck. In addition to new projects worldwide, there is new technology being developed to make tidal energy better. One such technology is the tidal stream generator. The tidal stream generator is basically an underwater windmill. Since water is 800 times denser than air, it will be much easier for the water to flow past the mill and cause it to spin. If tidal stream generators are perfected, the environmental consequences to tidal power can be greatly reduced. Another advantage is that the cost of a tidal stream generator will be much less than a tidal barrage. There are many different designs of tidal stream generators being developed right here in Canada. In 2006, a clean current company installed a demonstration turbine at Race Rocks Ecological Reserve in British Columbia. And in 2009, the province of Nova Scotia tested three different designs simultaneously at their tidal energy research facility. Although tidal energy is not widely used today, these new developments show great promise to the future. Hopefully, these new developments will cause tidal energy to become sustainable enough to replace such energy uses as fossil fuels that are destroying our planet.